Welcome back to the Hellenic Hour. Prime Minister Andoni Samaras potentially stacked the future of his coalition government yesterday on a decision to shut down public broadcaster ERT and dismiss some 2,700 employees, a choice that did not have the approval of his coalition partners and was met with division from opposition parties and TV and radio employees. Although there had been rumours over the past few days that the government would opt for closing ERT as a way to reduce civil servant numbers, yesterday's announcement by spokesman Simos Kodekoglu took millions of Greeks by surprise. Kodekoglu claimed that Ert suffered from a lack of transparency and was a source of waste. The Greek people are paying for Ert, which has three times, even eight times as much staff as it needs, he said. The government, he said, was sacrificing one of the public sectors. Greeks pay roughly 300 million euros a year in license fees for Ert, that are levied through their electrical bills. These charges would not apply until a leaner and more efficient public broadcaster is set up. Samaras had discussed the closure of it with several close advisers and government officials and saw that the move was one that would show his determination to carry out the structural reforms being demanded by Greece's lenders. Sources say Samaras brought up the issue with his coalition partners Evangelos Venizelos of Paso and Fotis Kouvelis of the Democratic left when the trio met on Monday. Venizelos and Kouvelis refused to give their consent for Er to be closed down, even though Greece has promised the Troika it would sack 2,000 civil servants this summer, 4,000 by the end of the year and 14,000 by the end of 2014. The Athens journalists called a 48-hour strike from 6am this morning on TV and radio stations to protest the closure of the state broadcaster Ert. There was also a six-hour stoppage on TV and radio last night after the government announced it would close ERT and later open a new broadcaster with fewer employees. Despite the signal to ERT's TV channels being lost shortly after 11pm last night, employees at the broadcaster headquarters in Athens and Thessaloniki refused to leave the building and managed to resume broadcasting via digital TV and the internet. Thousands of people protesting the broadcast Caster's closure have gathered and locked themselves in the Ert's headquarters in northeastern Athens. This will be without doubt a major blow to democracy, to media and to journalism as a public good in Greece, thus depriving citizens from their right to honest, level-headed and unbiased information. But it will also mean the loss of many journalists' jobs across the country. And on the line we have our guest for today, the President of the Greek uh, Community of Melbourne and uh, Victoria, Mr. Bill Papasteriadis. Bill, uh, very sad news with the sudden closure of ERT, the National Broadcasting Organisation of Greece. Absolutely, Ross. Um, it's very difficult to understand how it is that a uh, national broadcaster with some 2,700 employees Correct. Um, over one night be disbanded um, without apparently the support of the other coalition government members. Correct, uh, yes. As, as I uh, mentioned before, we put you to air that uh, Samaras made that decision uh, without, as you said, the consent of his coalition party, which again is uh, a, a very disturbing uh, factor indeed. Yes, exactly. And probably more disturbing is the fact that, you know, in a democratic society, the existence of public service media and independence from government really is the heart of all of the functions of a democratic community and society. And um, uh, we, we believe reaching a decision like this without having an open and inclusive democratic debate in Parliament is one which will not be... Um, condoned nor supported. Exactly, and uh, as you mentioned, 2,700 employees overnight find well, f- find out, or they wake up in the morning and find out that they don't have a job. And uh, correct at this correct. point, uh, at this point, we have uh, issues in Greece in regards to people uh, locking themselves in and uh, demonstrations everywhere. So certainly very disturbing things. And of course, as far as our community is concerned here in Melbourne and uh, all the Greeks in the uh, diaspora who uh, obviously depend very heavily on uh, ERT 
through the um, satellite uh, to be in touch uh, and of course an unbiased uh, um, approach to uh, the economic situation and to all things media uh, find themselves without a, a channel to watch. Oh absolutely look um, it's got far-reaching consequences for the 750,000 Greek Australians um, you hit the nail on the head when you said a lot of us depend heavily upon it for not only news content but also for the programs which it produces about Australians uh, on matters that we um, that are close to our heart, that is Greek Australians, definitely and broadcast around the world. So you find people in New York, Toronto, Chicago, you know, Germany, South, South Africa, finding out about everywhere. our events here in Melbourne through a properly produced program, like for example, to, from Australia with Love, I think, produced by a local Marquilor. Um, and his wife as well, and that's an exceptional program, as well as many others that come out of Greece. So sure. you're, you're decimating the voice of not only Greeks in Greece, but also Greeks ab abroad, and it's done with basically a quick, swift uh, movement of a pen overnight without the appropriate public consultation, and which, is, which has far-reaching consequences. Well, um, the other thing too, Bill, is that uh, for many years uh, I've been thinking, well, Ert has been going uh, all around the world at no cost. Now, of course, uh, there are costs involved with uh, uh, broadcasting and, and sending signals through satellite and so on all around the world. Now, of course, this has been a cost to, to Greece and to Ert. And uh, I've always wondered why they didn't put a, a small fee on people to watch Ert. I mean, people are used to paying fees and I won't even go through the, the issues we've had with uh, um, uh, people who have been bringing the signal here and uh, going out of business and so on with uh, UBI and, of course, with uh, TARBS a few years ago and uh, people being burnt, uh, um, uh, you know, paying for their package in advance and then finding out the company's gone bust and so on. But... The, the question I've always had is why wouldn't uh, the Greek government put at least a, a small cost of this so at, at least uh, the, the Greeks abroad can, can uh, um, assist with the costs involved with sending uh, ERT all around the world? I mean, that's, that's a sensible proposal, Ross, in the sense that what you're saying is before you make a radical decision, <coughs> yes, let's look at all of the Look at options. And the income stream and what is it that we can do to sustain the service Correct. Uh, to avoid its closure. And um, that dialogue wasn't had. Wasn't had. And th this is what's quite frustrating to me. Uh, uh, this morning uh, at about uh, 6.30, I got the phone call and I thought, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, surely... Uh, you sit down around a, you know, a round table and talk about the issues and look at where you can cut your costs, look at where you can get revenue. It's, it's, it seems like um, uh, the, thought, the first thought process is to cut costs, but uh, no one's thinking about revenue. No one's uh, thinking about revenue, but also the, the other point that we need to consider is from a standpoint, from a national standpoint in terms of how... Greece portrays itself globally, it's inconceivable for a European country to not have a state television channel, let alone for an hour. Exactly, uh, um, exactly. It, it seems we're going to be without one for three to four months. Uh, it's unheard of in a modern democracy, and, um, you know, we all accept that bold and genuine reforms are required in Greece, absolutely, but closing the state broadcast, I don't believe, is one of them. Alternatively, what could have been done is there's 650,000 currently um, people employed in the public service in Greece. Mm -hmm. You're talking about making one chop to one, um, one in organisation in its entirety instead of perhaps looking at... Scaling minor, down. Minor... Um, Changes. Um, yeah, basically omissions of people in, in over a variety of different departments. It just begs it's, belief it, it how is. They, they reach this decision. It is very, very disturbing. And, you, you, what, and what is also happening is, you know, there are a lot of people that have been working there for a long time producing very good quality programs equivalent to what's coming out of BBC and places like that. Um, programs that aren't shown on other television stations, music that's not played on other Greek radio stations, and a lot of knowledge has been built up and all of that good work and intellectual capital which they had is just completely obliterated with one, with one uh, foul sweep. Exactly. And the problem is 
your um, if there was a ten percent of the workforce not properly performing, well, you deal through that through performance management. You don't throw out the baby with the bathwater, which is what's happened. Exactly. And, of course, now you can imagine the phone calls that uh, 3XY has received this morning from very early, and they're still uh, they're going. People have lost their contact. We've actually it, it, we've lost contact with Greece. I mean, that's, that's what a lot of people, the message... Well, that's right. The message that's from exactly people right. is we've lost contact. We've lost contact, and it was one... You know, it kept with 3XY um, uh, and, you know, the TV station, uh, the radio station that... Um, the Stamoulis family uh, produces. It was another major part of keeping company to the elderly exactly. um, in Australia. Yes. You, know, you hear that quite often at functions or events where people say to me, thank God I've got the radio and I've got the television to keep me company. Exactly. exactly. And um, you've now taken a, another part, another slice out of out of their social life um, which, which, which will have an effect on these people's daily lives. Well, Bill, um, let's hope that uh, this is a, a short-term situation because obviously, as, as we um, spoke about before, that uh, in the manner that it was done by uh, Samaras, I think that, uh, as you said, it, it, it didn't seem like it was very democratic at all um, from uh, what we've read in the newspapers and so on, that it seems like this was a decision that he decided upon uh, and uh, he did it. And that's it, and to show strength, perhaps, or to show leadership. We're, we've already started that, Ross. What we're aiming to do as a Greek community of Melbourne, our organisation, is today I'm sending a letter to the Greek government and yes. to all the members of parliament expressing our, our disappointment and asking them to reconsider their position firstly. And then secondly, we will be seeking the support of all of the other organisations in Melbourne so that we send a letter from 100, 150 organisations in Melbourne um, uh, criticising and asking for the decision to be reversed. Right, because not only uh, um, the manner that it was done, but also also the fact that it's going to affect 2,700 employees, uh, which, which means uh, to perhaps 2,700 families on top of the, the current problems that Greece is facing. So, so where are they going to find a job? Where are they going to find a job? Uh, uh, surely this will impact on the economy once again. Um, um, this is what, what I find, uh, you know, and I'm not an economist and I don't profess to be one, but uh, sh- certainly from uh, Lehman's point of view, <laughs> that uh, it, this is certainly not going to help. Uh, um, yeah. The Greeks were paying 300 a million for this uh, through their uh, they were being billed through their telephone uh, bills um, towards um, Ert so uh, all of a sudden he's lost that revenue as well and now there's 2,700 people out there who don't have money in their pocket to buy food or to to pay their bills so uh, I don't know if that's logical what I'm saying to you Bill but it certainly I feel that somewhere along the line something's gone wrong Um, but anyway that's uh, for the Greek government to uh, look at, and uh, obviously from our point of view... the point from our perspective anyway. Exactly. Melbourne and the other organisations, and with your assistance, we'll, we'll be moving that forward. It definitely, definitely. Well, Bill, look, thank you very much. I'm sure you've received a lot of calls. You, you rang me uh, earlier on this morning, and I'm sure the Greek community is receiving a, a huge amount of uh, phone calls. Uh, the whole community, obviously uh, disappointed with this decision. Let's hope that... Uh, um, common sense. Prevails. Common sense exactly prevails, and uh, things get back on track. And people, uh, even if it's not the two thousand seven hundred, uh, whatever's required to run the national broadcaster, exactly. to at least uh, resume its uh, its broadcasting. Correct. Thank you very much, Bill, for your time, and hope Thank to talk you, to Ross. you it's soon. Pleasure as always. Should I should I touch on how we're going with the Greek community building? Since I've got yeah, you, absolutely. We're we've finished the piling stage, Ross. Which yes. Means we're um, at foundation level, and the foundation Foundations are coming through. Lovely. Um, you know, and in 12 months we will have a, a new building open to the public um, in, in Melbourne at the corner of Lonsdale and Russell Street. It so seems cool. like uh, next I'm April, right. is that right? Uh, 2014. Um, I passed by this morning and had a look, so um, it's all gone. See you later. Eh? It's all gone, and we've actually finished the piling as well. Fantastic. There's well, a lot of work going underground as well. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's great. Uh, well, there, we finish off with a good note, and this is a very <laughs> positive note. So thanks again, Bill. 
Thank you, Ross. Thank you for Have your time. Day. Yasu. Bye-bye. Yachara. Well, that was Bill Papasteriadis, the president of the Greek Orthodox community of Melbourne and Victoria, and, of course, concerned in regards to the sudden closure of Erd, the national broadcaster of Greece. We'll go now to some beautiful music, and we'll be back shortly here on the Hellenic Hour. Thank you.